Welcome to our introduction to ScanFont 5. ScanFont 5 is the quickest way to convert graphics into fonts. It's actually a plugin for the FontLab font editors. It allows you to take bitmap images, which normally you wouldn't expect to be in fonts, and to create vector images from them. Then you can place those images in a font in the correct order with the correct names so that you can use them just like you would any true type or type one font. Now in order to do the font editing part, you do need a font editor like Type Tool or Font Lab Studio or even Asia Font Studio. Something that can accept the output from the ScanFont plugin. The plugin itself does operate independently and it'll export a .vfd file. That's an internal format for use across our font editors. That means you don't necessarily need to have one of those font editors on the same computer as the ScanFont plugin. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up a bitmap image. This is a file that I scanned earlier. If I wanted to, I could retrieve a new file by going File, Import, and I could acquire that file from a scanner, for example. Now we've got our scanned bitmap open in ScanFont, and as you can imagine, there's a lot of applications for ScanFont. For example, if you had a sign, a picture of a sign, or a picture of a page in an old book, and you needed to recreate fonts to match that book or that sign, then just open up the scan page or take a digital photograph of that sign, bring that into ScanFont, and you can create vector fonts from those bitmap images. One of the first things you might want to do after you open up an image is touch up the letters. That'll just make the letters look better and prepare things for the next step, which is auto tracing. We've got an entire panel of tools here, basically essential tools for editing bitmaps. We can make selections, rectangular selections. We can make a freehand selection. We've got a magic wand, a pencil, a brush, and an eraser. There's also a paint bucket tool that you can use to fill in large areas. And you can also draw lines in various shapes. Again, basic but essential tools for editing bitmaps. So let's say that I wanted to add something to a character. Let's grab the zoom tool and I'll zoom in. I could grab the paintbrush and then simply click and drag to make changes to the letter. And of course, we can go to edit and undo. Now that brush tool is fully adjustable. Let's click on view and brush panel. You can specify your brush size, the shape, angle, roundness, hardness, you name it. You can adjust the existing brushes or you can even make a new one. So with these features you can draw just about anything that you could draw with a standard paint program. Let's go ahead and close that dialog. So once your bitmap has been cleaned up and you're happy with the results, the next step for us is to separate those shapes into individual characters. That way ScanFont actually knows what makes up a single character. On the Workflow Toolbar, the Separate button will actually do this task for us automatically. You can also access this from the Image menu. It's listed as Separate Shapes. When the dialog opens, you're going to see several options, one of which is the algorithm that you want to use to determine what is a single shape. You can try different settings and see which one works best for you. You can also choose to ignore blemishes that are smaller than whatever size you set. That means if you've got little specks on the page that you scanned, you can set the number of pixels to ignore and those shapes will be skipped. You'll usually want to let it automatically detect global baselines. But let's go ahead and click OK and see what happens. And as you can see, each individual shape has been correctly detected and it's identified as a separate character. Now, after you automatically detect the shapes. You might have to go in and do some things manually, make some adjustments. For example, here we've got the W and the X. Apparently we're too close together so they've been detected as one shape. Let's go ahead and grab the cell knife and we can click and click again to separate those two shapes into two cells. If you ever want to merge two cells together, Grab the cell selection tool, click on the first shape, shift click on the second one, then you can right click and select merge cells. 
Now, in some cases, when we have two shapes like this that have been identified as one, we can click on the cell, right click, go to separate shapes, the same dialog will come up. And in this case, we could make an adjustment to try to get those shapes to be separated. Let's go ahead and cancel that. Again, though, we also have the knife tool. Just click, double click, and that manually separates the cell. We've also got other tools that we can use to manipulate the shapes. We click on tools, we can flip them horizontally, vertically. We can shift them, scale them, rotate them, slant them, and make them bold. And we can also adjust things like brightness and contrast, hue and saturation. And we've even got some filters that we can apply to enhance the font. Once the image is in though, and we've got it cleaned up, the shapes are separated and edited so that the cells contain only one character, the next step is to export all of these characters into a font. Now let's back up and verify that all of our letters are separated and they look good. If you happen to have cells that you don't want, for example, we've got all these images down here and some other scripts down here, then you can simply select the characters that you want. Otherwise, all the cells get processed. And to do that, again, let's back up. You can select cells individually, holding the Shift key down. Or, let me deselect these. You can click and drag to select adjacent cells. Let's go ahead and click the Export button. We've got a few options that we need to configure here. The first one is the index codes. The default assumes the characters are all laid out in the correct Unicode order. So that means uppercase A is the first character, uppercase B is the second, and so on. And then continuing right away after that, we have lowercase A all the way to lowercase Z. And since the Unicode code for an uppercase A is 0041, that's the default starting code. If you select this option, ScanFont will automatically assign an incremental value to each successive character. So the uppercase B would be 0042, etc. Don't worry too much though if the characters are out of order because you can always rearrange them in the actual font. We'll go ahead and leave everything set to the default and click OK. This next dialog lets you specify which of the auto trace options you want to use. We've got several presets from very tight to very loose and of course you can customize the setting to your liking. It's usually best to select one of the presets and then tweak it. So we can increase or decrease the tolerance, adjust the curve fit quality, and the straighten angle. Notice you get a preview of the effect immediately. Let's just see what each of the different presets will give us. Here's very tight. Again, we get a preview right away. And tight. Normal. Notice the amount of nodes changes in the preview area. There's loose and very loose. Now again, if we select very tight, we get a lot of extra nodes. The drawback to that is the possibility of slight imperfections being traced. So they'll be more noticeable. In that case, you'd have to go back, clean the character up with the editing tools. On the other hand, if you choose very loose, then the trace might not be very accurate. So a lot of times it's a matter of trial and error. I think I'm going to go ahead and go with normal. And then we've got two options at the bottom of the dialog to generate curves and to generate extreme points on curves. It's usually a good idea to leave both of those on, hence they are the default. Let's go ahead and click OK and start the export. Now notice that even though Type Tool wasn't open, it was open automatically and the font has been exported to it. What you're seeing here is a table that has the new vector font. If we double click on one of these characters, that opens up a glyph window. And there's our font ready to be edited. So in a matter of just a few minutes, we went from having a scanned bitmap image to a vector-based font ready to use in any application. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you have any questions, we have the full scan font manual available as a free download on the scan font page of our website. You can also find links to reviews, other videos, and tutorials there. Thanks again for stopping by.